Hello there! Welcome to What's in the Box. Hmm. Stay tuned after this. What do you mean the title gives it away? Okay, so we're back again. And what was in the box? Well, in the box was this bag, and this bag, I'm gonna have to step a little closer just so we can see more of it. It's basically a whole load of photography gear. This is basically the bag to contain a couple of different tripods and a crossbow and some clips and some of the bits and pieces to go with the uh, actual kit itself. Now the bag itself is fairly basic, uh, a bit heavy to one side because most of the equipment is falling over that way. In theory you could potentially move this area over like this but that makes it look a bit uneven but as far as carrying it is concerned well, let's just see, over your shoulder like that I think, uh, yeah, you just have to make sure this doesn't bat you in the head or something like that. You can, can try to put it in like so, but then you can't actually get to this bit of velcro, it just, it's got some design flaws I could do with a bit of a work around, but in general, it's also got another bit of velcro there to try to keep things, you know, all together a bit more. And you can see the weight and balance does mean this moves around a bit when you try to hold it one-handed. Of course you're not supposed to, because I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. You have standard little velcro bit here to hold the straps together, and then you just put it down on the floor, like so, to actually get everything out. There's another strap down here to keep everything sort of bundled together. So it ends up looking a bit like this. Now you've actually got three compartments, one, two, three, and I've basically kept the tripods themselves on the outer pockets. On the inner pocket, I have, hmm, I have not enough space to get my hand. My hands aren't the biggest in the world, but this is quite a narrow little foot. So we have two tripods. And we also have three of these gator clips. I'll just come a little closer so you can see them a bit better. Here yeah, you got three of these. I've got them all stuck down one side and one of them's fallen out. And in the middle, like as I said before, you have a crossbar. Those, yep, those are the gator clips have actually came out. So you've got this crossbar and again I'll come in a little closer so you can see a bit easier. It's basically got extended sections in the middle of each pole and these sections you together like so once you've actually pushed the button down to actually give you the crossbow and I've just stood on the gate clips and nearly took my toe out. This is what I get for walking around barefoot, apart from my socks. Uh, you've got on either end you've got these little hole areas to sort of fit on top of the tripod stands and this little bit here okay and here obviously to attach onto the actual tripod end. Just take the gator clips away. So this is the end for the tripod. Ah, autofocus, pain of my life. So yeah, we have the tripod head here. They do actually come with some plastic protector bits, which you just screw on. Okay, these aren't what you use when you're putting the crossbar on. You've got some good old-fashioned butterfly nuts, wing nuts, wing nuts. Why was I calling them butterfly nuts? Yeah, you've got some of those, two of them actually to uh, allow you to do what you need to do. The actual deployment can be a bit fiddly sometimes. What I've found, if you put it all the way up like this and then just sort of push it down on the ground, it will actually deploy into its ideal position. Okay, so that is the ideal shape, so to speak. Okay, now as far as height is concerned, you've got all these little nuts here to extend it to its maximum and then just sort of keep everything in place. Does this extend further? Yes, of course it does. So there we have one set up properly. Let's try to set up the other one. One thing I will say, as far as the edges are concerned, and the autofocus probably isn't going to do me any favours here, but as far as these corners here are concerned, if I move my hand like this you might be able to see it a bit better, as the light bounces off my pale flesh. You can see it's just a smooth little round, but it does seem to work quite well on carpeted surfaces. 
I haven't tried on anything else, so I couldn't say if it does or doesn't work probably on anything else yet. And of course, obviously there's a little bit of a nut here, identical to these ones here and here, to help keep everything as stable as possible. So let's just see which is the best way to have these. Okay, now one thing I have noticed is that as far as that particular tripod is concerned, it seems to have just a bit more length to it than that one does. So I've had to adjust it slightly so that the crossbar is actually more stable. And that's not the full width of course, you can still get it further across I think just a bit more. Yeah, you could get just a bit more width. In fact, let's just see if we can do that. And that's still in shot. That's good. Because I'm literally just doing it on the fly. Now regardless of how far along you've got it, how much extension you've gave it, it's only going to have so much stability, okay? If I was to put all of my weight onto that, it would snap. Even if you had it all linked together, this is not going to double as any kind of gym equipment. Do not try to use it as such. Okay, it will break. And while this was relatively cheap and inexpensive to buy, um, at the same time, mm, it's not meant to be used for anything other than what it is. And it'll be a bit of a waste of money if you do actually break it, won't it? Now, in theory, these tripods can also uh, serve double duty not just as you know this particular photography rack uh, type thing but you can also make use of them for rudimentary tri tripods for your camera for lighting rigs and so on so if you have no need for the actual uh, background itself but you do want to have more more lights reflected uh, on whatever you're photographing you can use these quite easily these wing nuts of course keep the bow in place they don't need to go on too tightly. Just enough to do what they need to do, which is to stop everything from coming off. Okay. Okay. Right, and of course, what kind of background bar type thing would be complete without an actual background image? After all, we got three of these, so we must have gotten something to, uh, to use as a background. And we do, we got not one, but two. First of all, this white background, and secondly, this black. White and black, white and black. Who would have thought? So what do these look like when they go up? Well, first of all, you can see that the white one is, well, I've had it on the carpet, and my carpet needs a bit of a vacuum, and so I've just realized uh, from the amount of fluff and whatnot that's gotten on the white background, so yes, with, with regards to the white background, uh, you ideally want to keep it as clean as possible. I'm not sure what the material is that it's made of. It's made of the same material as the, the black one. It's a very sort of coarse, rough material. These creases are because of the way it was transported. The way it was packed was basically, obviously, folded over multiple times. That will wear out in time. Um, as far as washing is concerned, I don't think you would actually want to put these in a washing machine. Um, I think you're more likely to just end up washing them down with a cloth, giving them a bit of white down and just hanging out to dry. Now let's take a look at the black one. In fact, I can see straight away that this is a lot darker, so I'm relying entirely on natural light over here, so that's coming in through my window. So I'm just gonna hold this up in front of the window. Oh. Yeah, that's made quite a bit of dif difference. In fact, the only light is what's bouncing off the small gap that I've got here, because it's not covering the entire window frame. Um, the only light I can get is what's bouncing off there and on here. Hmm, that's actually an interesting look. I'm just taking a look at the viewfinder here, and yeah, I quite, I quite like the look of that. That's an interesting revelation. Hmm, but that's it. Ah, that's better. More light that I can actually see with. It's one of those rare, beautiful, sunny days out there. I've had a nice little walk outside, and now I'm doing a video that I needed to catch up on. So yeah, the obvious drawback with uh, all of these, as I just set back to it by them, obviously there's the creases that will wear out in due course, um, but the obvious drawback is that they're not really very interesting, are they? They're just a plain white background and a dark black ground and dark black background. Black ground? Hmm. Sounds like the name of some sort of new age punk emo band that 
really isn't any good and doesn't care. The other drawback is, of course, the way I've got it right now, everything expanded to maximum, it doesn't fit. And I don't think, unless you get really, really big background uh, rugs or plates or whatever you want to call them, I don't think that's really going to uh, be work aroundable. But, you know, if you're just shooting somebody from, say, the waist up, that's fine if whatever your subject is, if you're shooting from a certain height, you're probably not really going to care because you'll basically have whatever you want actually in shot in frame. Let's just do a little experiment here. Let's take the back one off and try to put it this way. Okay, so that was difficult. I made more of a meal of that than I really needed to, but you can say that that does work. To a certain point, it's still not particularly interesting. I'm noticing how the light bounces off the black still, so hmm. Not make any difference? Not really. Probably need some sort of diffuser or something like that. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, there's plenty of stuff I suppose you can do. It just depends on how creative you can get with your camera. Now let's see, what else did I get out of this? Oh yes, as a separate kit I got not one, not two, but three other backgrounds. So, I've already had these out to take a good look at them. They're a different material, but they're also not anywhere near as wide. Okay, so you can't see all the detail on this, uh, simply because it's not quite high up enough. But I shall, through the magic of holding my camera manually, just tilt it forward and hold it like so. You can see there are different creases here because of the way it's been packaged differently. It's a, not part of this particular set, it's a different company altogether made this particular uh, version. And the other two that I'm going to show you are from the same company. Um, I can't remember the names of them offhand at the moment, I'll have to go look that up and put something down in uh, the description or maybe put the name up in writing here. But I quite like this background. It's very basic, uh, basically has the feel of somebody who's decided to go min minimalist. They want a brick wall, but they want something a bit more than just a brick wall. They've gone and painted it white and then the actual brickwork here. That's meant to be the... F okay, I'll, I'll hold it a bit a little higher so that you can see it a bit better. In fact, let's do it like this. The floor is brickwork as well. I mean, this is instead of, say, a traditional concrete road or tarmac road, no, it's not quite a, well, it's not a cobblestone road either. It looks more like somebody's just taken old house bricks and laid them down in a cobblestone style fashion, which did actually happen in some places. Some, uh, some of the older parts of Britain, some of the roads that haven't been modernized still have that sort of, same sort of uh, look. On a similar note, on a similar style from the same company. Okay, this time a bit more rugged, a bit more noticeable as well, uh, especially in the light that we've got at the moment. Um, whereas the, the other one was a bit washed out. With the right light, that would probably look a bit better. But in this case, you've got bricks that have more sort of a gap where the mortar isn't perhaps as good as it could be. And then all this little different contours, the rough look and finish. It just looks a lot more, it has a lot more impact to me. Um, it doesn't look nice in a classical sense, it doesn't look beautiful in a classical sense, but it's beautifully rugged, it's very creative in its own mind, in its own mannerisms. The floor, I'm not entirely sure what that's supposed to be. Okay. In my mind it kind of looks like slab stones, but at the same time it doesn't it's a sort of versatility to it that I quite like. I'm just wondering a lot of the time what that is actually supposed to be. And it's on a postcard. Now the other th thing, and this is a, a factor with all three of these, on the display on Amazon where I got these from, these were all sort of displayed in a way that had this section sort of on the ground, okay, on the ground sort of like so, I can't really show at this angle, but you know, this was sort of curved around, tell you what, let's use this as an example. So if we say this was the background and the bottom bit here, 
would have been curved around for the model to actually stand on to give the illusion that this was what they were actually uh, standing on as if it was a real place. Now with the height that I've got this set to that's obviously not possible but even if I did actually lower it down given how tall most models generally are these are perhaps just a bit short uh, in that regard but who knows maybe it's got maybe it's a kiddies version that I bought by mistake who knows but I think in general I could still I could still make use of this if I just zoom in a bit and find my mark yeah I mean this could still be quite useful have a microphone set up somewhere and have things you know set up like this this could be quite an interesting uh, change of background in some regard I mean would you know where I actually was but do you know that wasn't a real wall well probably yes of course because it's, it's still quite obviously a photograph of some sort but like I said I didn't just get two of these I got three of these and this is arguably the best okay I'm saving the best fast of course, as usual. Who wouldn't save the best art? You don't go and open a massive park with uh, dinosaurs and make the T-Rex the first thing that everybody sees. No, you wait until the very end, make people want to see the T-Rex, but not give them it until it's the last thing uh, that they'll see. Usually as they're sitting down on the toilet. <clears throat> okay, so this time we have the good old-fashioned traditional brick wall. And, you know, a, a good look at this. In fact, I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see some of the more interesting details. You can see the mortar and whatnot is a lot more full, okay, closer to the edge of, uh, of the wall. The bricks are all different colours in many different ways. There's lots of different curious patterns and whatnot on them where they've obviously been used a lot. Kind of makes me think along the lines of somebody who's, say, uh, got themselves an apartment flat or something like that. Some old factory that's been turned into an apartment complex and somebody's decided to be all so creative and not go with uh, wallpaper or anything on the walls. Just not even bother to paint them, just have the bare wall itself. Now I don't know if you've done any kind of decorating in your life, I have. Not in any professional capacity in any way, shape or form, just various DIY projects around my house, my parents' house, friends' houses. Yeah, that does sound semi-professional, doesn't it? Well, I didn't get paid, that's the most important part. But as with this, if you do ever strip wallpaper off your walls and then pull your carpets up as well, and in fact you should actually do that the other way around, you'll then notice just how echoey everything gets. And from a making video perspective, that's obviously bad. You want, you know, sound suppressing stuff up where possible. Um, but just not having carpets on the floor, having bare walls, it gets annoying after a while. Especially if you've got, say, a wooden staircase. Because if you don't have a carpet on the wooden staircase, then every footstep is a thump. No matter how soft or gently or slow somebody might go up them, that's exactly what it is. It's thump, thump, thump. But as a look, it's fantastic. I especially love the wooden floor. I mean, even that has a certain amount of character. It's a more uniform character, so to speak, but it is still a good bit of character. I just wish that these three were actually longer so that you could actually have a bit more versatility. You actually have somebody standing on that to make it look like they're actually there, so to speak. So I'm quite happy with what I've managed to get out of this lot so far. In fact, let's tell you what, let's do this little tilt down that I was doing before just to give you some idea. Yeah, doesn't it look lovely? I'll just move that back. So yeah, I am happy with this. This is adding just a bit more of a, well, I was going to say just a bit more of a tool in the army, but it's actually a few different tools when you think about it. There's multiple backgrounds that I've got. There's the potential for additional lighting rigs if I don't use this as an actual background thing. Okay, the only thing I need now are more lights uh, and possibly another stand or two to, uh, to make use of it. But I do have another tripod that I could use, a more sort of traditional tripod that I could use as a light source in that case. Overall, um, despite the shortcomings in height, no pun intended, I quite... I quite like it. The looks are great. It, with the case of the white background, it's just a case of getting the right kind of light balances and whatnot sorted out there. Tell you what, I'll just stand here so that I'm getting sort of the light hitting off me. No, I tell you what, that's probably not a good idea. How about that? How about that? Mm. 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 Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah, I think it's just a question of getting the right light for each of the different backgrounds, which is 
obviously something that's always necessary in some cases. I do obviously have different plans to make use of this particular material, uh, YouTube-wise, and hopefully uh, as part of my amateur photography type of stuff anyhow, I am not by any stretch of the imagination a professional. Um, and obviously this sort of stuff is not going to make me a better photographer because that's something that will only come with practice. Just getting this by itself will not make me be better automatically. Practice, practice, practice. Learn from the experience. That's something you've got to do no matter what you're trying to do, whether it's photography, art, writing, singing, making music, Playing video games, making YouTube videos. Yeah, you name it, you've got to practice it to get better at it. But I think using this will actually give me just a bit more mm, versatility. Anyhow, I've rambled enough. Thank you for watching. If you've managed to make it this far along, you have the patience of a saint.